Welcome to the Philadelphia Zoo. Hey, story time friends. Guess where Miss Adoria is today? At the beautiful, gorgeous, wonderful, amazing Philadelphia Zoo. Where I haven't been since probably the 90s. Very excited to show you. So hang on for some more adventures. He's like, get off on me, get off on me. Instead of just pointing, saying, found it, we actually take a look. Nom nom, nom noms. Look at little nom noms. They're skinks. Over there, it's right over there. Kink. He's saying, excuse me, part of me, excuse me, part of me. <laughs> Babies are moving. <laughs> Alright girls, back no back here. Oh, so cute. his own nose.
the T Rex? Does he make a loud sound? Benson, come stand over here. We're going to take a picture of the T Rex. Silly little arms. It's like if I move my arms this way, they'll grow. Welcome to the story portion of our story time. We hope you enjoyed all the cool things that you just saw at the zoo. Weren't those dinosaurs incredible? Oh my goodness, you don't even know. So they extended that exhibit, that big time exhibit at the Philly Zoo until the end of October because the people demanded it. It was only gonna go through the end of September, but I just found out the other day that they're extending it till the end of October. So if you can get to the Philly Zoo, please do everything you can to go see that exhibit because it's so cool to see those giant animatronic dinosaurs in person. I've never even seen dinosaurs except their bones at a, at a museum. So to see them as almost real creatures is just crazy wonderful and you should definitely go and get there so and how about all those reptiles that we saw in the reptile and amphibian house wow crocodiles and snakes and skinks and geckos and oh there's just so many lizards and turtles and those tiny little tree frogs oh my goodness those tiny tiny little tree frogs they were about that big Oh, they were so cute. Those little green and black ones and the orange ones. <gasps> they were, it was such a great thing to see, let me tell you. So here's a great book. It's called, What If You Work at the Zoo? And this is something that you never want to do to a library book. Do you see all these pencil marks? Please don't do that to the books because it doesn't make it good for the next person that wants to read it. So. This is called, What Do You Do If You Work at the Zoo? by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. And look at all these critters. What do you spot? Lizard, seal, meerkat, giraffe. What do you do if you work at the zoo? Well, you'll be a zookeeper, a person who takes care of the animals. You'll feed your animals and you'll, you'll do your best to make sure they, st they stay healthy and safe. But the zookeepers also have more unusual responsibilities. You might find yourself playing games with a monkey, imitating a vulture, weighing a snake, even tickling a tapir. Here are a few of the surprising things you might do if you decide to work at the zoo. Look how cute that joey is. You can cuddle a joey. A mother kangaroo keeps her baby, called a joey, safe in a pouch in her belly. If the joey doesn't have a mother, for the next six months, you'll carry it on your own, in your own pouch made of cloth. That's something you'll, you might do. Oh, you also might impersonate a vulture. The, this king vulture chick is being raised in a zoo, but when it is old enough, it will be released into the wild. To keep it from becoming too attached to a human, you should feed it with a hand puppet that looks like an adult vulture. You see that, right? Sometimes, if you've seen documentaries about people taking care of baby birds that lost their parents, they don't want them to look at a human and see it as a parent. They want it to look at another vulture and say, ah, oh, yeah, that's right, I'm a vulture. <laughs> Hey, you can also find yourselves counting a colony. It's important to keep track of all the animals in a zoo. Making a regular count of these Humboldt penguins will ensure that none of them are missing or sick. So let's make sure, let's see, how many do you count? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, yes! You can find yourself rubbing an aardvark's ears. 
Oh, I would love to do that. Look at that beautiful aardvark. At home in Africa, aardvarks are nighttime creatures, but in a zoo, they are often active during the day. So you'll need to slather sunscreen onto the aardvark's sensitive ears to keep them from getting sunburn. Shine a tortoise's shell. Polishing the Galapagos tortoise shell keeps from drying out and cracking, and the tortoise seems to enjoy the attention. Do you remember we saw those giant tortoises in the first part of the zoo visit? Oh, I would love to get in there and shine those shells, I tell you. How about give an elephant a pedicure? An elephant living in the zoo doesn't walk miles a day like its wild cousin, so its toenails don't get worn down. The elephant is trained to hold up its feet one at a time so you can file down its toenails. <laughs> and please try not to be tempted to paint them. A wild hippo feeds on grass and water plants that don't get stuck in its teeth but the fruits and vegetables it eats in the zoo can get trapped and give the hippo cavities. So you'll need to give its huge tusks a regular brushing. Who think you would be brushing a hippo's teeth, huh? I don't know. Puzzle a meerkat. Why hide a meerkat's snack? It's not always easy for wild animals to find their food in the wild, that's why. So when you give this meerkat a puzzle, it must figure out which tube has a treat inside. You'll be encouraging its natural behavior to look for its food. Then warm it up. In Africa, meerkats like to bask in the sun. When it's cold outside, you can help them stay toasty by turning on the infrared heat lamp. He's taking a sun bath with the lamp. How about serenading a seal? If you're a musician, try playing a tune for a seal. The music seems to calm them down. A little Zen seal listening to some saxophone. He's probably listening to jazz. <laughs> Tickle a tapir. A wild tapir rubs its body against a tree to remove ticks and other parasites. In a zoo, it doesn't really have to worry about the parasites, but the tapir still likes a good rub and it seems to enjoy a gentle scratching with a rake. So that's not so much tickle a tapir as it's rake a tapir. <laughs> Play ball with a bear. Playtime is important and uh, for, I'm sorry, playtime is an important part of the day for many animals. It keeps them entertained and it's good exercise. Try tossing a ball to this polar bear. She'll love it but you might not get your ball back right away. <laughs> Give me that ball back. I love these illustrations. I think they're just beautiful. And pass to a rhino. How about playing soccer with a rhino? Make the pass, then get out of the way fast. <laughs> I didn't know rhinos like to play soccer. How about train a dragon? You see that ball with the red thing on it? That's a, that's a, training stick. How do you get a dangerous giant lizard to climb up into its cage so a vet can give it a checkup? Train it to pursue a red ball on a stick to get a reward. When the Komodo dragon follows the ball into a cage, give it a dead rat. Mmm, what a treat. Just put a little hot sauce on there. Pick up panda poop. Oh, panda poop. People eat almost nothing. Oh, people. <laughs> That's right. I said people, but it really says pandas eat almost nothing but bamboo. And they eat a lot of it, which means they make a lot of poop. So get your shovel. It's a dirty job, but somebody has to do it. And not just for pandas. Zookeepers clean up after all the animals in the zoo. Don't make this at home. When it's hot, kids aren't the only one that likes popsicles. Zoo animals get fruit sickles, fish sickles, and meat sickles. You can make a hyena happy with a blood sickle. Mmm, yummy. You thought it was a cherry flavored popsicle, but no, it's something else. But it makes the hyena happy, so there we go. 
hey, how about bottle feeding a giraffe? This little giraffe's mother is sick and can't nurse her baby, so you'll need to give the calf a bottle of milk every few hours, and it just might decide that you are its mother. Oh, that would be really sweet. I love that little tuft of hair on the top of their head. A hurricane. Oh, or how about or a manatee? You could bottle feed a manatee. A hurricane separated this baby manatee from its mother. Manatees are mammals and their young drink milk, so you'll be feeding it by hand for the next year or so. That is commitment, I tell you. Or how about sizing up a guitar fish? Did you even know that there was such a fish? It's a guitar fish. If you know how to scuba dive, you can measure this guitar fish, a close relative of the shark. Keeping track of an animal's size lets you know if it's healthy and growing properly. Uh, I think they're weighing a snake. What do you think? There's four people on scales with a giant snake. Pick up a python. Keeping track of an animal's weight is one way to make sure it's getting enough food, but to weigh a 350-pound snake, you'll need to recruit some friends. <laughs> That's five people. Hey, you can entice an elephant seal. How do you weigh an elephant seal? This enormous animal is happy to flop onto a scale as long as you reward it with lots of yummy raw fish. Or maybe a fish sickle. Introduce a friend. Cheetah cubs, hey, a cheetah, woo, usually have several brothers and sisters. But this cheetah was born alone and it seems lonely. Try introducing a new plate, a playmate. Not a plate, but a playmate. A golden retriever puppy. Wow, that's cool. I bet that is a good friend for the cheetah. So there it is. That's what you can do to be, uh, that, those are some of the really cool things that you might do in, in a zoo besides feeding animals. They regularly check on the animals they're responsible for to make sure none of them are sick or injured. They make sure they're getting the right kinds and the right amounts of food and medicine. They keep each enclosure clean and safe. They stimulate the animals and encourage them to use their natural behaviors by playing games with them, giving them puzzles to solve, offering them food in new ways, or introducing new objects to their habitat. Train animals to remain motionless, to hold out a foot or other body part, or open their mouth so that zoo veterinarians and dentists can treat them. And educate us visitors by answering questions or giving talks. Yay, that's what you could do if you work at the zoo. So how about this one? Orangutans are ticklish. Fun facts from an animal photography. And I'm sorry if it's a little glary because of the plastic cover. I hope it's not too annoying. Don't be too annoyed. We have to protect our books. This book is written by Steve Grubman with Jill Davis. In memory of Tucker, Gouda, and Henry. That's who Steve is dedicating it to, and Jill is dedicating this to for my mom and dad who taught me to notice the most important things. You see this elephant here? Look how cool that elephant is. So here we go, orangutans are ticklish. Okay, if we have some time, I'll read these, but let's move on. Hippopotamus. A hippo's yawn doesn't mean she's tired, it means she wants to fight. These fat, fleshy feet are holding up a lot of hippo. That's why each foot has four webbed toes. They splay out like fans to share the heavy weight of the body. Do you see the eyes and the nostrils high atop the hippo's head? That's so the hippo can see and breathe while she sits in the water all day long, just like a frog. Who else has eyes and nose on the top of their head. Alligators and crocodiles, that's right. What's that you say? These big, long, sensitive ears make the aardvark a very good listener. Sharp hearing is extra important when digging in the ground for ants and termites. What if an enemy walks by? An aardvark has to be able to hear it coming. What? And the wrinkly hide? 
Its thick skin like a, is like a coat of armor protecting the aardvark from dusty dirt and annoying insects. Most aardvarks don't want to say cheese for the camera since they are nocturnal and very shy. Do you remember what we read about in the last book that sometimes you would have to put sunscreen on an aardvark's sensitive ears because at zoos they seem to be out during the day? Oh, and the photographer wanted to say, I had to lie in my belly to get that photo. Western gray kangaroo. Yes, you have the longest feet. Yes, you, long ears, donkey snout, and a big thick tail for balance. Kangaroos come from Australia. When this kangaroo was born, he was about the size of a jelly bean. And he lived in his mama's pouch for several months. A baby jelly bean is called a joey, but a grown male like this one is called a buck, a boomer, a jack, or an old man. <laughs> the kangaroo's hop is called a saltation. That means the animal hops with both feet pushing off the ground at the same time. Kangaroos can't hop backwards, but they can hop forward as fast as 30 miles per hour. Wow! Big, big, giant muscles in their legs and make them go Bow! That is very cool. Who else are we gonna find out about? A grizzly bear! This grizzly bear has a lot to say. Grunt, roar, he clacks his jaws and teeth. He moans and he blows. These bear sounds make bears seem angry. These sounds are called bluster. But guess what? Bears bluster when they're afraid. Every grizzly has a big hump between the shoulders and the fur around it sometimes look grizzled or tipped with gray. That's where the bear got its name. Look at those big thick claws. They can be as long as four inches. And the photographer says, this grizzly is 10 feet tall standing up. His trainer told me, don't pet him. Do you think I'd want to? Said <laughs> the photographer. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's uh, 10 feet tall. My goodness, that's almost twice as tall as most humans. A chimpanzee. Say cheese, chimpanzee. What are you doing with your funny face? Chimpanzees are tricksters. They look smart because they are smart. They understand the way things work. They can do puzzles and learn sign language. Their funny faces show how they feel. Angry, loving, surprised, fearful. Like humans, some chimps enjoy holding hands and kissing. Did you know that chimpanzees will play with rocks and sticks almost the way humans play with dolls? But don't expect to see them swim. They don't like the water. And the photographer says, this chimp and I took turns making funny faces at each other. Monkey see, monkey do. They're pretty cool, huh? A lion. A lion's big fluffy mane tells everyone, I'm in charge around here. To his enemies, it says, you better watch out, I'm the king. A dark brown or black mane is easy to see from far away, and it warns the enemies off. This lion is all by himself, but in the jungle, he would never be alone. He would be with his family or his pride. That's 15 or so lions that live together. Lions can't live without their pride, and yet no other cat lives this way. Do you know that the lion is the only cat with a tuft at the end of his tail? That's pretty cool. And the female lions don't have these big giant manes, right? They don't need them. And do you know that the female lions do most of the hunting? Yes, that's right. Wow. So the photographer says, I got this majestic creature to look wherever I wanted by using my dog, Polly. His eyes, his eyes followed her wherever she went. Oh, I can imagine that. I'd get my dog out of that studio, I tell you. Tiger. The tiger is the largest member of the cat family. Muscular and strong, this solitary mammal has a roar so loud it can be heard for two miles. Hey, wait a minute. Oh yeah, I'm not that big. In the wild, tigers and lions don't live on the same continents, but in a fight with a lion, a tiger would most likely win. He is stronger and faster, and his teeth are longer. His bite is harder, and his 
paws and his claws are much larger. So between the lion and the tiger, the tiger is the bigger animal. Remember when Allison, Keeper Allison at the Quansig Zoo showed us the teeth of all of those critters that she had in a box and the, the tiger's teeth were the biggest ones. Oh no, they weren't teeth, I'm sorry, they were claws. Yeah, that's right, I can remember things. So the claw of the tiger were the biggest ones in that collection of claws that she had. This is an alligator. Don't confuse him with a crocodile. An alligator has a wide U-shaped snout, not one shaped like a V. That's one way you could tell the difference. Another difference, when an alligator's mouth is closed, you, don't, you won't see any big bottom teeth. On a crocodile, you will. Basking in the sun is the way alligators and crocodiles keep warm. If they get too hot, they open their mouths just as a dog does when it pants. That lets heat escape from the body. This alligator is 10 feet long. And the photographer says, we got this alligator to sit still for the camera by dangling a piece of raw meat on a string in front of him. <laughs> oh, let's just read what the photographer said about the tiger. This cat got away from his handlers and came after me. My crew said they've never seen me run so fast. <laughs> oh no, orangutan. When you tickle an orangutan, she might burst into gleeful grunts. Is she ticklish? Is that laughter? Scientists say yes, but these thoughtful apes can't have fun all the time. Orangutans have to learn how to take care of themselves. That is why their moms teach them how to find fruit, how to build nests, how to find insects and birds eggs to munch on. Then they can live by themselves as orangutans do in the wild. When it rains or if the sun is too hot, orangutans sometimes use big leaves as ponchos. That's right. And the photographer says, I wish I had a video of this shoot. The orangutan and I both danced. It was pretty silly. She looks like she's really getting into that there. Look how cute and sweet she is. So fuzzy. Big long fingers. Do you see that? Giant hands and big long fingers. She can grab fruit and stuff. Look at these big floppy ears of this elephant. They tell us where an elephant comes from, India or Africa. If their ears are big, they come from Africa. If they're small, they come from uh, Asia or India. Look at this trunk. It's his upper lip and his nose rolled into one. Imagine that, your upper lip and your nose turned into a hose. Hey, I rhymed. The trunk is very useful. To cool off, the elephant uses it to spray water on himself. When he's thirsty, he uses his trunk to drink, sucking up water and shooting it into his mouth. And in a water fight, the trunk is the best super soaker. It never runs out of batteries. Elephants like to have fun, but they also like to take care of each other lovingly, just the way humans do. If an elephant is hurt, often the herd will try to help walking slowly and patiently, waiting for the injured animal to catch up. Come on, catch up. The photographer says, I love photographing elephants. They're challenging to, to light because of their size, but the ones I've met are very friendly. Oh, wow, giraffes. Do giraffes communicate? Oh, yes, they do. They whistle, moo, and hiss. Sometimes they roar, and some giraffes even kiss. Their tongues are black. They never take baths. Giraffes can be up to 18 feet tall, making them the tallest animals in the world. Their long necks allow them to eat from trees and plants that few other animals can reach. Imagine this, a baby giraffe might have to fall six feet to the ground after being born. Wow! Hopefully it's on a pile of grass. The handlers asked me not to touch the giraffes, but that didn't stop the giraffes from touching me. They kept bending down and rubbing their heads against me and the camera. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Hey, it's a Kotamundi. This is a Kotamundi. Kowatimundi. That's how it's pronounced. Kowatimundi. 
If you were a friend of hers, you might use her nickname, a coati. Cute and furry, this little mammal is a cousin of the raccoon. Her snout is long and flexible, and her long tail helps her hang from tree branches. She weighs about 10 pounds. Coatis live in southwestern United States and in Central and South America. Lots of people have coatis as pets. You can take them on walks. And the photographer says, this coata mundi was friendly and inquisitive. She sniffed at everything on the set. Well, that means that's how she investigates her world, is with her nose. Now with zebras, stripes are the, stripes are the thing. Black stripes on white or white on black? What do you think? I don't know. I always thought it was black stripes on white, but now that I look at it up close, it could be either. Scientists say they are black stripes on a white background. Oh, well, there you go. They can tell because the zebra's belly has more white than black. Do you know that no two zebras look exactly the same? Each zebra has a different pattern color and stripe size. It's almost like our fingerprints. That's how you can identify a zebra because their stripes are not exactly the same, which I think is so cool. And I wonder if that is the same case as with the giraffes, like their pattern of their spots. I think those are all different too. When a group stands together, their stripes make it hard for their enemies to see them. It's kind of like an optical illusion. The enemies wonder, where does this one stop and that one start? And the photographer says, I was careful to move slowly so as not to startle this zebra. Zebras are known to kick or bite if they feel threatened or cornered, just like any horse or donkey or mule. And uh, that's cool. I can't believe that he got to photograph all of these critters. Here, let's just read two from this. The orangutan. Each night, orangutans build new nests in the trees for sleeping. They howl to warn others to stay away from their food. And they may live to age 35 in the wild and to age 60 in a zoo. And let's read about the elephant, too. Often when old elephants lie down, they can't get up again, so they don't lie down. <laughs> they must sleep standing up. Elephants communicate over short and long distances by making very low sounds in their throats. They can also feel vibrations from the ground that other elephants make when they walk or run. And an elephant's truck, that trunk, that upper lip and nose combo, has no bones, but has many muscles. So, wow, what a cool book. And if you want to read more of those facts, come in and get this book. It's Orangutans Are Ticklish. And it's J59022 Grubman. And this one also has a lot of other facts. Also, uh, what do you do if you work at the zoo? And that's in the J590s as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate your time and your uh, willingness to hang out with us as we talk about critters and go to the zoo and do all kinds of fun stuff. And we just want you to come in, get some books, read a lot of books, educate yourselves about all the wonderful critters there are in this world, and enjoy the biodiversity that our planet has to offer and help to protect it. And I just wanted to mention one thing. Uh, the zoo has a program called 30 by 30, and it's uh, on their website, and we're gonna put up a link to show you what that is. And it's an action that you can take by writing to your congressperson and asking them to support this bill. And it's all about habitat and critter preservation. And um, you could go right on their website, fill it out, and just press a button and help critters. So isn't that wonderful? Thanks again for subscribing and a big thanks and shouts out to all the people that work at the Philly Zoo. What a wonderful trip. It was just so wonderful. I'm glad you could come on it. Thanks for subscribing. Have a great day. Peace. See you next time. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Crafting with Miss Adaria's Hands. <laughs> what are we doing today? Well, we're going to do a craft. We're going to make a dinosaur. What? You see these shapes that I have here? Get that glue out of the way. I painted them 
so that they would be nice and dry. I just used some tempera paint and then uh, I had this guideline of, uh, it is a diplodocus, but it's kind of the same shape as one of those plant eaters, like a brontosaurus. So what I'm gonna do, and we're gonna use this paper plate as his or her body. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna see if this color green matches. It's a little bit darker. Let's see what this one is like. Oh yeah, that's a good one. So I'm gonna draw a line here, make it just a little bit round. All right, and then I'm going to turn this over so I don't get Sharpie marks all over it. And I'm just going to go in and color this body so that it is the same as what I painted. And it's not going to look that exciting, but... The smell of Sharpie, I tell you. But it's going to be our dinosaur bod. Okay. It probably would have been better with paint, but then it would have taken probably about like a half hour or an hour to dry, and we just don't have time today. <laughs> no time, no time. Like the rabbit in Alice in Wonderland. That's right. Just didn't have any time. He had to rush around and get to the next thing. And I don't like living like that, but hey, some people like to be in a rush. Okay. We're almost done with this. And then we're going to put the dinosaur together after I cut out the other parts of her body. Did you think of a good name for our dinosaur yet? What about Matilda? Isn't that a good name? Do you remember the story we read about Edwina? And how Reginald von Hooby Dooby? wanted to prove that she was extinct because he believed that all dinosaurs are extinct. Well, she proved him wrong, didn't she? And she rewarded him with kindness and friendship and a fresh batch of chocolate chip cookies. That's how all friendships should be sealed with a fresh batch of chocolate chip cookies, don't you think? <laughs> People would get along much better if they baked each other cookies. So here is our dinosaur body. We're going to let that dry from the Sharpie just for a minute while we cut out our shapes. I'm just going to go over here and grab his legs, her legs. Okay, let's officially make this dinosaur a girl. Matilda, Matilda, Matilda the green dip. Blodocus. That's an interesting name for a dinosaur. Let's cut out Matilda's tail. Whoa, this is going to be a long, 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 long tail. I wonder why they had such long tails. My thinking is that it helped to balance their bodies because if they had such long, long, long necks, their bodies might not have been able to hold them up and they probably would have just fallen over from the weight of their necks. And then how would they be able to move and eat and walk around? So maybe the tail gave them some balance. And also it could probably be used in case a bigger meat-eating dinosaur was trying to have them for lunch. They probably could use it to swipe at somebody like please no don't eat me 
and the tail would whip around and knock into somebody who was trying to hurt them. And the tail was very useful for these dinosaurs. Gosh, wouldn't you have loved to have been alive in dinosaur time? Oh, man. Or wouldn't you love to have been a dinosaur? That would be nice. Okay, we're cutting out Matilda's head. All right, and down her neck. Look how cool this dinosaur is going to be. There she is. There's her head and neck, and there's her tail. And now we're going to cut out her feet. Big old dinosaur feet. Now, I know you only see two of them, and she definitely has four of them. But the way we're going to make this body is going to be in profile, so you're only going to be able to see half of her body. It's like if you stand in front of a mirror and turn sideways, you really can only see one of your legs and one of your arms. So that's what that means. And well, there you go. So here's one of her legs and here's the other leg. Almost done. Round that off a little bit. Have you ever been to a museum and seen dinosaur bones? Wow, I love that. You know what's a really good museum up in New York City? It's called the American Museum of Natural History. They have a lot of dinosaur bones there. They have a, they have a Tyrannosaurus Rex. They have a Brontosaurus, which is kind of like Matilda. Okay, so here's her body. And also there's a museum in Philadelphia that has uh, dinosaur bones, right? I haven't been there since I was a kid. So how we're going to do this is because um, the glue is going to take too long, but normally I would use some glue and put the legs on and the head and the tail. See how she's gonna look? Isn't that cool? Wow. Or should it be like this? And this should be the top of her body. I'm not sure. You could do either way. What looks better? I don't know, I think I like the other way better. So we're gonna use tape just to get these on quickly so you could see what it looks like. But normally I would be using glue, but I'd have to stand here for a, a while and hold that. And I don't wanna make you wait to see this wonderful dinosaur put together. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of tape on the back of these legs. Put the legs right there. And my Don, my Don dolls are supervising this operation today. But they couldn't see because they were laying down. So what's up with that? Okay, girls, what do you think? I think you're doing a fabulous job with that dinosaur. I think if that dinosaur was alive, we could probably go for a ride. Yeah, I think Matilda would let you take a ride. Definitely. She seems like a really nice dinosaur. I don't know if she would bake cookies for us, but she definitely would let us go for a ride if you asked her very nicely and were very calm and polite and didn't hurt her body. Yes! Okay, so here we got Matilda, and I think what Matilda needs is she needs some way to see, don't you think? So, oh, you know what? Just give me one second. I have, I have an eye for Matilda. <laughs> I think it's going to be pretty funny. I have a little tiny eye for her. So, and it, it's, um, oh, it's the, the uh, static is making it stick to my finger. So my thumb had an eye there for a minute. And I think, oh, I thought maybe 
you could peel it off and it would be sticky, but I think um, a little dot of glue will go for Matilda's eye here. Come on, come on, dot of glue. Hey, I had this all working. What's going on? It just doesn't want to cooperate. I know, maybe there's a little bit of glue stuck up on the top. That could be it. Come on, glue. Yay. Oh, I used a little bit too much. So I'm going to take a tiny little bit of that glue off because I think that would be too much for the little eyeball. Okay, that looks like that's about right. Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> My fingers are not cooperating. I want glue to be right there. Okay, good. And here is Matilda's eye. <gasps> Look at that cute little eye. Isn't that funny? And you know what we could do with the darker Sharpie? We can make a little nose and a big smile. Because you know she is one happy dinosaur. We'll save that eye for another project. So what do you think of Matilda? Yay, we love her, isn't she great? And look, here's, here's a, this is supposed to be an alligator or a crocodile, I think it's an alligator. But they definitely descended from dinosaurs. <laughs> so what do you think? Oh, Matilda, you're lovely, oh, thank you. Shall we go off into the swamp together somewhere and have some fun and get some food? Oh, that sounds great. What do you think, Dawn Dolls? Oh, Matilda, you're so great. Woohoo! All right, kids, thank you so much. I hope you had fun. And uh, please stay tuned for story time next time and our fun craft. And we'll have some surprise guests along the way for our in-house story times. And so until then, have a wonderful day. You take care. Stay safe. <laughs>